The world of Assassin's Creed is vast and expansive, featuring many characters both historical and new in this captivating time period, the early Middle Ages of England. As Eivor, you will find yourself adventuring across the seas to the new frontier, but you are not the first. Many Danes have arrived before you, and today, ladies and gentlemen, I want to fill you in and explain the lore surrounding the Sons of Ragnar and the Great Heathen Army. There'll be no story spoilers here, but this video will help you get a grasp on who is who and where is where. Welcome to Fudge Muppet, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Scott, and thanks to the sponsorship that Ubisoft has so kindly given us, today I'm going to tell you the tale of how the Danes came to be on this isle of rich history. For most of the early 9th century, the Vikings had been carrying out various raids on monasteries and any place of wealth they could feasibly rip from the hands of fearful monks, merchants of meager courage, and famished farmer alike. It was a tradition started with the sacking of the Abbey of Lindisfarne in 793, a holy island off the coast of Northumbria. However, the Great Dane Army, or rather the Great Heathen Army as known by the Saxons, arrived on the Isle of England in 865 with the intention of conquering all the Saxon kingdoms, including East Anglia, Mercia, Northumbria, and Wessex. But what motivated this great military movement? Of course, there is riches and promise of a new conquered land, but what was the story behind this violent conquest? To understand this event more, we need a little more context. It all starts with the legendary Ragnar Lothbrok. You may be very well familiar with the Vikings TV series and its depiction of this great character, but of course, there is some creative license taken there, as is also the case with the Assassin's Creed from time to time. So, bear in mind that we are talking about the lore of Assassin's Creed Valhalla rather than the strictly historical accounts. Ragnar Lothbrok was a legendary king and warrior who, with multiple women, sired at least five sons, the infamous Ragnar sons, who led the great heathen army in 865. You see, Ragnar Lothbrok was eventually caught by his enemy, the Saxon king, Aella of Northumbria. Ragnar was punished, likely tortured, and executed by being thrown into a pit of venomous snakes. This brutal execution was a key motivation for the great heathen army led by his sons, Ivar the Boneless, Bjorn Ironside, Sigurd Snake in the Eye, Uber and Hafdan Ragnarsson. Fun fact about Hafdan though, there are various sources which mention a Ragnar son called Fitzirk, and also sources that mention Hafdan, but any source that mentions Hafdan has no mention of Fitzirk and vice versa, which has led some scholars to believe that they are in fact the same individual. Clearly, this is what Assassin's Creed Valhalla goes with, as we only see Hafdan, and there is no mention of a brother named Fitzirk. The invading army landed in East Anglia, spending the winter in a place called Thetford before they moved north to conquer Northumbria, and before the sons would have their revenge on King Aella, subjecting him to the vicious death sentence of a blood eagle, where the victim has their ribs severed from the spine and their lungs pulled through the back to create wings. A brutal, brutal execution. By the end of 866, the Great Heathen Army had taken Efferwich, a rich Anglo-Saxon trading center of Northumbria, better known as modern-day York, or rather, by its Danish name at the time, Jorvik. It also happens that King Aella had been in the midst of civil strife with the Northumbrian king that he had deposed, King Osbert, but Ivar and company also killed Osbert too, so there were no kings but the ones they wanted. They established a puppet king there in Jorvik before they would travel south to Mercia, and they captured Nottingham in 867, resulting in a combined effort of Wessex and Mercia to recapture the city, but to no avail. King Burgred of Mercia resorted to paying the Vikings to go away so that they would return to Northumbria, a deal to which they accepted the terms. They returned to Jorvik and spent the winter of early 869 before they returned to Thetford in East Anglia, where they would spend the winter of early 870. It was here that they were attacked by King Edmund of East Anglia, who was hoping to rid his lands of the Viking menace. But of course, the Saxons failed, and King Edmund was captured and slain. 
Throughout the course of their stay in Thetford, they reinforced their army and they marched on Wessex. The Danes engaged the West Saxons in many battles. King Ethelred of Wessex defeated the Danes at the Battle of Ashdown. However, it was a lonesome victory for the Saxons of Wessex. They were then defeated at the Battle of Basing and Battle of Merton, which was followed by the untimely death of King Ethelred himself. Following this, Succession anointed his younger brother Alfred as the new King of Wessex, who would one day be known as Alfred the Great. King Alfred made a decision to pay off the Vikings in order to buy the West Saxons some much needed time. The Great Heathen Army then spent the winters of 871 and 872 in London before returning to Northumbria. By 873, the Danes had taken up quarters in Repton and stayed the winter into 874. This is where you will find Uber and Ivar planning the rest of their Mercian conquests. Now you, as Eivor, and your brother Sigurd arrive in England. So for the rest of the Danes' conquests, you will experience these in-game, but now you have a general outline of the events that led up to the beginning of your adventures in Valhalla. So let's have a deeper look at the Sons of Ragnar, the leaders of the Great Heathen Army. Ivar the Boneless is quite the perplexing historical figure. His moniker, the Boneless, has led to much speculation and further conjecture. Theories have ranged from erectile dysfunction to rare degenerative bone diseases as sources for the colourful name. However, another alternative, and the ones that the events of Valhalla will show you, is that he is described as boneless because of his fluid fighting style, as if he had no bones beneath his skin. It is also stated that he does not share the same mother as Uba, and judging by appearance, likely the other Ragnarsons too. Ivar is known as the youngest of the five, and he is substantially shorter and has lighter coloured hair when compared to Uba, his half-brother, as well as the other brother you will meet, Hafdan. Perhaps his disposition came from his mother, because unlike Uber, he is a true warmonger, always keen to slaughter his enemies and take things by force, the Viking way. He also takes great pride in his earned title of King Killer, having slayed King Aella, King Osbert, and King Edmund. Uber, on the other hand, is this dark, tall fellow with a more pragmatic mind, desiring stability and true ownership of the lands. He is unlike his brother Ivar, a whirlwind of carnage, but he still loves his brother despite their differences. Perhaps it is this more sensible approach that has left him more so unremarkable in the annals of history when compared to his other brothers, but arguably the most accomplished of the brothers you will meet is Hafdan Ragnarsson. He is a monstrous man who wields a great hammer with unparalleled might, bearded and long-haired, possessing a closer resemblance to Uber than Eva. He has taken the fight north, beyond Saxon enemies, and defends his newly claimed kingdom of Northumbria against the Picts from the north. Hafdan himself mentions his brothers Eva and Uber, of course, but also two others that we do not get to meet, Björn Ironside and Sigurd Snake in the Eye. Pretty awesome titles to go with the names. Sigurd Snake in the Eye is called so for a unique characteristic with which he was born. In his eye, there is a mark described as an Ouroboros a snake eating its own tail surrounding the pupil. This is also an important symbol in Norse mythology. You see, Jormungandr is a great sea serpent that encircles Midgard, the mortal realm. In history, Sigurd is known as a legendary king of Denmark who succeeded his brother Hafdan. It seems in this family, kings are not uncommon as Björn Ironside is known as the legendary king of Sweden, yet that was not all Björn was known for. He fought with the great heathen army and sought revenge for his father's death against King Aella, but he had not remained. Sources tell of times he made raids into the Mediterranean, hitting places like Spain, France, Sicily, and North Africa. So likely, this is where Björn is currently during the events of Valhalla. The other big Dane player in Assassin's Creed is Guthrum, also known as Guthrum the Old. He was nephew of Horik II of Denmark and a failed candidate for the throne. Well, Good thing you can always look somewhere else to conquer a new kingdom, and that's what he did. He, as one of the leaders of the Great Summer Army of 871, set out across the seas to join with the Great Heathen Army in England, and he would be a recurring problem for the remaining Saxon powers in the future. And yet, for those of you who know history, he has an interesting fate, one that involves Alfred and Christianity. 
That, ladies and gentlemen, is the great heathen army and the sons of Ragnar. By now, you should have a good idea of what events led up to the England that you will experience when you first set foot on the beautiful isle, and also, hopefully you understand a bunch of the characters a bit better. I didn't want to go into spoiler territory, as there are some really great experiences and story arcs involving the sons of Ragnar that you will meet, including Uber, Hafdan, and Ivar the Boneless. My name is Scott from Fudge Muppet. Give the video a like if you enjoyed it, and please do let me know down in the comments below if you are enjoying Assassin's Creed Valhalla. This time period is just one of my favorites of all history, so I loved it, personally, a lot. Thanks so much for watching this video, and I'll be back to nerd out with you again next time.